it's actually Rob Short that's going to speak to us now, and Rob's going to speak to us about um, where to go in the future. Thanks. Thank you very much. I noticed from the title that uh, I'm going to talk about options. Actually, I'm going to talk about one option. Um, I think that it's actually very important that we also look at the other side of the equation. We understand that manufacturing is facing some very significant challenges that labour costs are cheaper abroad, therefore it's cheaper to manufacture abroad. There's a lot of outsourcing as a response to this. That India and China are becoming knowledge-based economies, and perhaps one might argue that the currency rate is too high. Universities are actually facing equal challenges, and these are taking universities in quite a different direction. And it's also worth spending a little bit of time exploring where universities are going. If you want to engage with a university, you actually have to understand what drives a university. And in fact, universities will, are undergoing and will undergo significant change over the next 10 years. The pressures are national and international. In Australia, we are coming up to something called excellence in research in Australia. This is a government audit of the quality of research in Australian universities. Now, this sort of audit's been done abroad. I used to, to work in the United Kingdom. We have something called the Research Assessment Exercise. In 20 years, it changed the university landscape because the first time through, it was just an audit. Second time through, big wadges of cash came with your rating. And so it changes the way that universities think um, because they get a lot more money for thinking a specific way. And the other pressure that's coming, and I'm going to talk about ERA again in a moment, the other pressure that's coming is World League tables. Uh, universities are global institutions in that their students come from all over the place. If your position in a table is higher, you get many more high quality applicants. And so World League tables are also driving universities. And so what's actually happening, and if we concentrate on ERA, what's actually happening is the universities are being forced to think in specific ways. They're being forced to think about fundable research activities. And largely, this is the sort of activities that are funded by the Australian Research Council. Now, I wear another hat. I actually sit on the Australian Research Council on their College of Experts. So I'm going to give you a little bit of insight as to what is driving funding in Australian universities in the manufacturing space. The other thing that will drive us is high-quality outputs, publications. Now, in the context of manufacturing, what era and what the ARC funding um, criteria mean are the following, that there will be an increased focus on advanced materials and diagnostics and sensors, particularly in the medical engineering area. These are fundable activities. And it's not um, a, a coincidence that Christine had actually showed that there was over-provision in South Australian universities in materials, because it's a federal priority, and universities are being driven in this direction. And the impact of this is that there will be an increased focus on basic science and engineering in Australian universities. It will refocus existing staff, but more importantly, it will dictate all new appointments going forward. And the problem here, I think we all want to work together, so it's worth getting the problem out in the open. The problem is there'll be a growing gulf between what manufacturers need and what universities do. And the problem will become more exacerbated as the company becomes smaller or we look on more of a micro scale. So what can universities do for manufacturing? Well, I'm going to present just one option. It's not the only option. We can build capability and capacity. What we can do is we can pioneer te uh, technologies for future manufacturing. To some degree, they can be used to support existing manufacturers who are agile enough to take the opportunity of engaging as this process is going on. But more likely, what we're going to do is provide a platform for new generations, um, uh, so a new generation of manufacturers through these technologies that we're developing. Now, the question is, universities have been there pioneering at the cutting edge of science, engineering. Are they effectively supporting manufacturing there uh, as well as they might? And I think the answer is no, and we have to understand why this is the case. If you look at research funding to universities, it's always done on a project-by-project -project basis. Now, the outcome of this is that the researcher becomes focused on the project deliverables. Also, because projects are funded for about three to five years, there's a continual turnover in staff. And because at the ARC, we pretty much slash budgets by about 30%, it means everyone's working on a tight budget. So 
the outcome of this is I don't think anyone is maximizing the benefit of having world-class research on their doorstep. And there is world-class research in the three state universities. Now, one possible solution to this problem is the following. is to build capability above the project level, but before the, project, the technology is ready for seed corn funding. Now, an example I want to give is uh, a project that was funded by the Premier Science and Research uh, Fund in 2007. And the idea here was to develop a capability. It was to take it from the project to a capability level in technological plasmas. Now, I've got a couple of videos which unfortunately don't play, so I'll have to tell you what uh, would have been in the video. Unfortunately, you can't see it. I can see it here brilliantly. I'm seeing these massive coronal loops coming out of the sun. And this is a, a, a usual source of plasma. And then I'm, I'm seeing here, um, and you're not seeing it, I'm seeing breakdown above a power station. So the entire sky above the power station is becoming a plasma. Now, these are, are naturally occurring plasmas, but, and I'm seeing it again, actually, and I don't know why I'm seeing it again. Uh, I need to move to the next slide. I might just have to do this. Okay. But plasmas also can be contained in the laboratory and they can be used in manufacturing processes. And indeed, they are very widely used. And I'm about to show you a picture of a home and uh, about 20 odd examples where plasma have been used in manufacturing items in the home. But what I wanted to do show, show you first is that plasmas can be contained on a laboratory scale. And they tend to be used for existing, uh, modifying existing surfaces or adding coatings. And here's an example that I borrowed from Mark Kushner. And we have 21 different examples. It's a little bit forced, this, but 21 different examples of either um, products that are manufactured by plasma or contain plasma within them to, to work. I, I particularly like, now I think it's, it's five. I mean, the, the, the gentleman sitting there apparently has an iron implanted artificial hip, and he's looking at a magazine uh, which conveniently has a car on it, which has got another four examples of where plasma has been embedded in the, the manufacturing process. Now, what we're doing with the uh, support of the state government is we're actually going to scale, scale down plasma. Plasma, typically in manufacturing, is used over large area surfaces. We're scaling it down for the next generation of products and technologies, integrating it into to biomaterials, uh, electro-wetting, uh, high-throughput thru screening, and process intensification means my microfluidics. Now, this is a, a state investment, and I want you to think about what's being done here for a million dollars. The state's putting a million dollars into this to take something that was running at a project level up to, to a state capability. For a million dollars, they're going to involve two state universities and actually bring in two international universities, Illinois and Liverpool. They're tying together Two research institutes within inside one of these state universities, and that's the walk and the, these are the walk and the Morse. So they're involving three industrial sponsors. And what the state's going to get back, and if you think of this in the context of other activities that the state might be involved in the manufacturing area, what the state's going to get back here is pretty good, I think. They'll almost certainly get back new IP for the state. They'll, uh, they'll ensure that there is a manufacturing opportunity, whether it's graphs, I, I can't say, but one hopes so. They certainly ensure that the states, universities remain nationally and internationally competitive. And there's a good chance that if they remain nationally and internationally competitive in this area, they will at least link up on a national or international scale with manufacturers who could benefit from this type of technology. It ensures that the state is actually better positioned to capture uh, its share of national funding, and it doesn't actually. It misses out on its share repeatedly. It has the benefit, and you can't really understate this one, that allied to the actual project, so this is not coming from the state funding, they will be training the PhD students in, in other projects. So I think that this is the sort of type of activity that the state's engaged in that is going to, to, to ensure the possibility of a platform for a new generation of manufacturers. I think it's, a, it's the way forward if you think about the fact that the universities are being driven increasingly in, in a new direction and that there is potentially this goal for opening up. How do we maximize that the universities have been taken in this direction? I also just want to finish with the point that I suspect that we will need to, 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 to increase our investment into this type of capability if we, need, if we want to, to ensure on a statistical basis that we have enough opportunity for new manufacturing in the state. Thank you.
Thanks, Rob.